All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have here? We have a KTM. It's the KTM 1090 Adventure R. It has a few options on it. I'm going to go through really quick, and one of them is a skid plate. These things come stock with these guards. You can get the upper guards, but really they're not protecting much. These panels aren't really all that expensive, and the tank would be tank handlebars would really be protecting anything inside here and what is inside there well the radiator is pretty far in there and it's actually inside the tank so the upper bars really don't do anything except for add some weight what else do we have so that skid plate a pretty heavy duty skid plate we got on there and uh what else we got we got the stock exhaust this exhaust i believe has had the rear baffle removed which just adds a little bit of grunt down in the uh, lower RPM range. We've got some good tires on it. These are the EO7s, you know, the newer ones. They're great for gravel roads. Uh, they're good on the road. They're good on the highway, pretty quiet. In cornering, you do run out of a little bit of uh, sidewall here, so you can lean the bike over to a certain point. But when you get into sport bike category or territory, you're going to start getting a little bit off the edge there and uh front tire we have the tkc80 which is a twin duro uh on the pavement you have to run it a little higher than uh, recommended actually i'll run it all the way up to 38 psi sometimes to get that tire to round out properly after a lot of lower pressure like 20 25 psi anyways uh, enough on that uh these bikes share a lot with a couple of other bikes so you've got the 1090, 1190, 1290, they all have the same frame, the same ergonomics, the same engine, the same swing arm, the same all of that, right? There are a few minor differences between some of the models. So the S and the R models, so the Adventure S and the Adventure R. Adventure S has a slightly shorter fork. I think it has a slightly longer swing arm. Uh, it keeps that uh, steering characteristics on the highway a little bit nicer on the r model it's a little bit taller a little bit more aggressive suspension a little bit shorter swing arm i think in the rear i can't be quoted on that but i think so now what's the difference between the 1090 1190 and 1290 as far as the motor and it's all there's displacement so the heads are a little bit larger right so you need a little bit more stroke a little bit larger piston and that's what creates the 1190 or the 1290 and what do you find the differences are between the three bikes 1190 had kind of always been my favorite because it spins up really quick and it still has tons and tons of power. The 1290 spins up a little bit slower. Pistons are a little larger, a little bit longer stroke. The 1090 spins up super quick and you know what? They all have a tremendous amount of power. Today, when you ask me what is my favorite motorcycle of all time, now I've ridden a lot of bikes, it is the Adventure 1090R. I love this motorcycle. This engine size is absolutely perfect. It spins up really quick, so you get that instantaneous power. In off-road mode, all the bikes are identical as far as power. The power ma mapping is at 100 horsepower. When you put it into sport mode, you start getting a little bit more power in the 1190 and the 1290, but just a little bit more. Uh, the 1290s now, you know, you're getting up in the 160 horsepower range or something ridiculous like that and your traction control is going to stop that so really with traction control on they're still all really going to be the same because that back tire starts to spin and it starts cutting power with traction control off you can really start seeing the power differences but with anything other than a street tire you can only use so much power that back tire just starts spinning when you're at 120 to 150 horsepower you can spin that back tire pretty easily anywhere freeway you know roadways anything it's unbelievable the amount of power so what i've found the perfect amount of power weight and all of that is this 1090 r it is absolutely ridiculously awesome some other things this bike has we'll get into that so it's you can notice the seat is a little bit different so that is the seat concepts seat super comfortable that will fit the 1090 1190 and 1290 unbelievable all of them are exactly the same because the frames are the same so there you go the foot pegs these are the adventure foot pegs from ktm they are a little bit longer and a little bit wider 
gives you a lot more room for that boot when you're uh, standing up. You can just have a lot of comfortable space to move that boot around. You can move it all over the place. Pretty awesome. What else do we have? Uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, well, it's got an updated chain and sprockets uh, just to uh, get into a, a better quality chain and sprockets. Then we got into the motor, and the motor has the Rottweiler SAS removal kit, which uh, you'll notice by these block off plates here. That removes the whole SAS and uh, charcoal canister and the um, SAS system that sits up front. It's a bunch of wires and tubes and all that kind of great stuff. Um, we also, in the intake here, you can't really see it. Up inside there, there are some foam pre-filters to keep out that large dust and uh, and make cleaning at air filter having to be cleaned a little bit less often you know enough talking about this bike we should go ride it we'll take off and ride it around let's do a little parking lot routine we'll give it a start up and all of that it's a very tall motorcycle anybody that's short in stature under a 32 inch inseam will be straddling the bike a little bit just standing off to one side even when you're six foot tall 33 to 32 to 33 inch inseam you're tippy toed across when you're standing on you know for both feet it's tippy toes but uh, you'll find that most people just shift their butt right off the side and you can sit just fine the thing I really love about KTM 1090 and 1190 is that the electronic package is less than it is on the 1290. I've had both the 1290, the 1190, and this 1090. I had a 690, a 701, all of those bikes. And one of the things I really kind of go back to is I really want basics. I don't want too much in the electronic category or, or you know, packages because I want less to go wrong when I'm way out in the back. All right, enough of that, let's ride around. Talk a little bit more about that parking lot these things are fantastic they are so easy to manage in parking lots all the only exception you might have with that is having to put your foot down but boy you can just turn these things lock to lock no problem real easy to manage the power is great they've got the power really managed well um, there are a few things you can do to smooth out the power on some of the older ones where they had a little bit of hesitation off the, off the bottom, but I don't find it on the uh, 1090, so that's 2017 and up. I just don't see that being an issue. The older bikes, I see it being a little bit of an issue with the fuel injection when you get on the throttle a little bit. It was a little hesitant, and so what they had you do is remove the uh, O2 sensors and put in some dongles that tricked it into thinking that it's running at a higher RPM and it richened out that mixture. 2017 and up, I just don't see it as an issue. They are smooth as can be. I mean, off really, really low idle like this. Just very slow, nice and smooth. This had the dongles on it. I took them off. They don't, they weren't providing any benefit. On or off it, run, it ran exactly the same. I didn't see any change in it, so I pulled them off because it's one more thing that you could have go wrong. And the Rottweiler dongles have gone through some upgrades. And so for the SAS removal kit, you get dongles. On this bike, I have replaced all of those with their latest version of the dongles. Now what's the difference? I'm, gosh, I'm gonna really go into some details here, but the difference in those dongles is, and I'll, let's see, I'll stop so I can kind of say. So there's a little dongle and there's a little wire that came out and it had a little diode on it. And that little diode was exposed so it could hit on the frame or hit on something like that and it could short out and it triggers some lights on the dash. Now, the new ones, the, that little uh, diode is inside the, the little uh, uh, connector. So they actually pushed it down in there and they epoxied over the top of it so there's no chance of it shorting out. If you have dongles on your KTM, you have Rottweiler dongles, and they're the type that have the little loop out of it, just buy new ones. They're 30, 40 bucks, just, just bite the bullet and buy new ones. They, it's not worth having the trouble out in the field. So the new ones are rock solid reliable. The old ones, uh, I've replaced them on every one of my motorcycles. Anyways, let's get out on some windy roads and I'll get right back with you. Anyways, it is the KTM 1090 Adventure R. 
If you've made it this far, hit that subscribe button for some updates and some new videos coming out. Uh, all my ride reviews come out here. If you hit that little bell icon, ding, 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 it will remind you when I post them. Usually it's on Fridays, but I've been uh, getting some out uh, earlier and uh, some during the week as well. So check those out. Anyways, appreciate it. Those subscriptions and those like buttons really help my channel and it gives me the ability to do more of these so i super appreciate that if you can uh, hit those we're going to take off here on the 1090 oh nice good little bumps there now some things i love about this bike so this windscreen which is a pretty minimalistic windscreen if you look down here there's a, a hole in the windscreen it's a vent and what that vent does is it makes it so that the air stays turbulent. Um, it creates a negative pressure and then you don't feel any of that uh, head bobbing. Uh, you don't get any of that disturbance on your helmet when you're riding along at freeway speeds. Basically, I and it's a pretty straight up and down fairing. I run it in the high position, it's still pretty low, see? But it keeps the wind right about midway up my windscreen on my helmet so just barely just kind of at the top it keeps the wind uh up on my arms and just to my shoulders everything's off my chest and the bike provides protection around my legs so i don't feel the wind on my legs or my lower body at all and that makes it really great and super comfortable going down the freeway so you know, I'll pull off 750, 800 mile days on this bike. No problem whatsoever. I feel totally fine and relaxed when I get to where I'm going. So anything below that, super, super easy. And you can't say that on a lot of bikes. You got some nice long travel plus suspension. So even on bumpy roads, it's really, really nice. Off-road, these bikes are amazing. The only thing you gotta do is tell yourself to try and chill out because it feels just like a dirt bike and you can get you can get pretty far down in there i take these things on single tracks to uh you know enduro trails uh, i take it on adventure routes all the all anything i just there's no no place i can't really take this bike just it's awesome awesome all around motorcycle you've got uh, ktm provides heated grips this bike has the heated grips on it uh, those are about a hundred and fifty dollar option something like that, but uh, well worth it on those cold days it can keep your hands really warm Power let's talk about power a little bit. So this bike has different settings. I usually keep mine in the sport setting and I will uh, turn trash control off and just to kind of give you an idea, I think we'll stop here in a little bit and I'll kind of give you an example what that what that's like. If you turn that traction control off, then it, it doesn't stop that back wheel from spinning. And you'll find that uh, it does spin. So they are uh, they're quite powerful motorcycles, all of them. I love this little Summit Garage thing here. That's super cool, don't you think? Let's see here. Try to find a good place. We'll find a place in a moment and we will uh, do a little, some power runs. This bike has two 12 volt outlets in the dash, a larger one that you normally see in your car and then the smaller one you see on like BMWs and you know, your heated vests and stuff like that come with uh, little uh, outlets like that. It also has a, uh, a GPS bar that it's the uh, Tour Tech dash and it goes right behind the dash it kind of bolts in with the dash and then it get, provides this uh, GPS bar for you I actually use that as a phone mount on my bike I have the same Tour Tech dash and uh, I put a little uh, mount here to mount my phone on there and uh, that's what I use for my normal GPS and then down lower I put my off-road GPS because uh, I don't need to stare at it all day but uh, that helps me let's stop here for a second we're going to change some of the power settings we'll pull into this little dirt lot here and if i go into the modes here let's see what we got here take me a second i think i just went in so there's your heated grips menu don't need that on 
the traction control we have on the ABS setting on road and then there's a drive mode and we have uh, street rain off-road so we're gonna put it on a street and so we have street and then the ABS mode this is the standard settings for the bike and we'll kind of get an idea what that feels like and then I'm gonna stop and we'll change those out so that uh, traction control if I get on the gas like right there I'm in a dirt lot right now and I can get on the gas and it brings the tire out a little tiny bit there's good bumps here we can try out now I'll get on the gas that's it and it feels like wow that's pretty good power and then as I roll on the speed you know it's like then it just seems like wow I got more power as the speed increases well what's happening is that back tire is not spinning <laughs> So the faster I get going, then all of a sudden you can start feeling more and more of that power because this does have somewhat of an off-road oriented tire on it and it's going to spin. So that's kind of it right there when you get into that. Now that's limiting the power at about 100 horsepower and then the uh, traction control is bringing that down anytime it senses the, uh, the, the back tire starting to spin and then it'll cut power. And it's it's not really abrupt so you just kind of think wow bikes you know it's it's powerful but it's not amazing <laughs> then we can let's find another little place to pull out here we go i'm gonna pull out right here and we're gonna go ahead and change that out now we'll go through that settings so you can do this while you're riding i just was hoping you guys might be able to see this if i stop so we go into the drive mode i hit the set button I'm gonna move it up to the sport. It asks you to close the throttle and it saves that setting for you. If I go over to my ABS mode and I go for tracks control and uh, I want to change that, hold down the button, release the button and I've turned the traction control off and then the ABS I wanted to talk about the ABS mode so I can turn ABS off on the front wheel or I can turn it off altogether and so right now I've turned I mean on the rear wheel so I've turned it off on the rear wheel and left it on in the front and that's the way I run mine so now you'll see the traction control light on let me slow down here a second because I know I was gonna put it in first gear so for now if I give it gas well, I can't keep the front wheel on the ground. Holy Jesus. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the front wheel on the ground. It is unbelievably fast now. I just can't crack the throttle all the way open and the front end just comes right up. So we'll do another run. I'll see if I can keep that front end on the ground again. It just, it's how I'm just keeping it just off the ground there. I don't want to be pulling a big old wheelie down the road. But it is so fast, it just transitions this bike into just an unbelievably fast motorcycle. Let's see if I can make a U-turn here. Maybe my tires are a little bit warmer now. I don't want to be around these people. Let's see what we can do here. Are you ready? <laughs> I did my best, but it just comes right up. It just got so much power. You know, I hit second gear, front wheels just right up. <laughs> First gear, you just got to be careful. You don't want to loop it out, right? And that's just getting on the gas. I'm not trying, really, guys, I'm not trying to pull wheelies here. I'm just trying to. So the difference is just amazing. So first gear just comes right up. Second gear just comes right up. I just can't keep it down. Just so, so fast. Third gear comes up. It's just woo! All right. can just uh, tone that right back down I can go back into power modes while I'm riding 
and hit the drive mode and then there is the uh, traction control and I can turn those down and then I've got a docile motorcycle again pretty cool this is this is my favorite motorcycle of all time guys I've had a lot of bikes uh, so if I could recommend one motorcycle this is the bike man unbelievable and the price is really pretty dang decent prices on these bikes so you know they're not extremely expensive for what you're getting you know I I looked at some other bikes that I thought hey you know maybe I should look at a different motorcycle but even if you're looking at say a Tenere 700 or something like that the weight difference really isn't that much and you're just getting so much more motorcycle with the KTM 1090 Adventure R for me my favorite bike of all time is the KTM 1090 Adventure R boom <laughs>